Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Progressive Comedy Tour, January. We're going to Florida. We we're adding new dates all the time. I just put some new dates on there. I'm also headlining some clubs. It's not part of the Progressive Comedy Tour, but in the Chicago area, the end of February. Uh, those are all at GrahamElwood.com. Florida, come out for the shows that Ron and I are doing. They're probably going to sell out. We've already sold a lot of tickets in Orlando and um, Gainesville and even some in Jacksonville. So you don't want those shows to sell out. We just sold out in San Francisco and Sacramento. So we just celebrated Veterans Day, Veterans Day, November 11th. Do you want to know the history of Veterans Day? It's the end of World War I, the 100th anniversary of the tragic end of World War I. Those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. This was in globalresearch.com. Uh, so what happened on the 11th hour, on the 11th month, on the 11th day, they ended World War I, which was like one of the worst, deadliest wars. World War I was also referred to as Wall Street's war. People were very much against that war in this country leading up to it. It was already starting to happen in Europe and most Americans didn't want to get involved. It was called the Wall Street War. President Woodrow Wilson hired George Creel to come up with the Creel Commission and what Creel came up with was how to market this war and sell it to the American people. This is featured in Hedge's book, Death of the Liberal Class. He used the media at the time to get that war sold. They used newspapers, they used magazines, they used radio, and they used this new medium, the film, the talkie. You know, the, well, it wasn't, I don't know if talkies had started then, but so they did the, this movie about the bad, big bad Kaiser and all this stuff. World War I actually was. One of the early Rothschilds helped form this secret society to push World War I. And that's where Veterans Day came. It was the end of World War I. Now we don't really end wars. They just keep, they kind of go on forever. But here's what happened. November 11th marked the 100th anniversary of World War I's end, officially the 11th hour, the 11th day, the 11th month. And the hour leading up to the both sides just shelled crazy, just, and then stopped. Like a war ended and people put down their guns and the war ended. <laughs> the so-called war to end all wars was a prelude to a much worse to come. In 1928, Kellogg brained policy renounced aggressive wars. The UN Charter's preamble states, we the peoples of the United Nations determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war which twice in our lifetime has brought untold sorrow of mankind. One of the things that was so awful about World War I was like the trench warfare, they started using mustard gas. Um, it was brutal. It was an ugly, brutal war. So brutal that in fact, there was an armistice, a Christmas day armistice, where both sides stopped fighting and went and hung out on the battlefield and talked and shook hands and yeah, in the middle of a war they did that. Because even back then the corporations and the politicians were benefiting from the war and the working class was fighting it. During World War I, an unplanned Christmas truce occurred over the 1914 Christmas period. Both sides stopped fighting fraternizing instead. On both sides, soldiers left trenches over half of the front, defying orders, calling such an attitude dangerous. Uh-oh, can't have people getting along. Saying it destroys the offensive spirit. What was unimaginable happened. Both sides took time off from fighting, shook hands, buried their dead, chatted with each other, enjoying the calm, even played football with each other. Isn't it great now we just have drone strikes? We can just drone poor people in the Middle East or wherever and we don't even have to see it or feel it or touch it or taste it or know about it and the media is barely covering Yemen. We're finally talking about Yemen a little bit. But we're not getting pictures. They're not rolling across the screen across Fox or MSNBC or CNN or any of those folks aren't showing it. 
Rachel Maddow isn't showing video after video after video of what's happening in Yemen and crying about it, is she? Historic group, British and German soldiers photographed together. This was Christmas Day, 1914. I wonder how many of these guys were rich kids. See, the ruling class decides they need war, they need whatever, land, they need natural resources, so they concoct some war. They kill the Duke of Ferdinand, which was probably some type of false flag. And then the working class gets to go fight it out while the Rothschilds drink tea. Unofficial truces occurred other times throughout history, several times during World War I, but never like Christmas 1914. The message was clear. Ordinary people deplore war. It's the enemy of peace, humanity's scourge. Good wars don't exist. Nuclear war, worst of all, if it occurs, power-hungry madness may doom us all if not curbed. Not a hint of it so far today in Washington. Mother's Day started as the mothers of soldiers that had died in World War I. Might have been the Civil War. I'm, I'm, forgive me if I'm mistaking that. But there was either one of those horrifying wars. A bunch of moms got together and said, this is awful. Mother's Day was a anti-war day. We need to have a peace day. Maybe Memorial Day, we need to change its name. A peace day should replace Memorial and Veterans Day, honoring the living to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which endlessly in our lifetime has brought untold sorrow to countless millions worldwide. World War I ended 100 years ago, and it was horrifying. The war to end all wars. That was a marketing slogan, the war to end all wars. Because we were told if we fight this battle and win it, then there won't be any more wars. That's what we were told. I think there's been a couple of wars since then in the last hundred years. And now we're currently at war in eight countries. We have bases uh, all over the planet. We outspend the next seven nations combined. I'm in favor of movement for a people's party and I'm calling out all Democrats that are in favor of war. I'm calling out all neoliberals that are in favor of war because it's horrifying. I've seen it up close. It's pretty nasty. It is the worst thing. So, let's learn from the, le the past before we are doomed to repeat it. My name is Graham Elwood. You're watching The Political Vigilante. Thanks for tuning in.